Okay, this is take three of the video. My children have had needs. Go figure. <laughs> right. So I have wanted to have bariatric surgery for a long time. I've thought about it for a long time. Um, I was still proactive. I've done the things you're supposed to do. The first time I lost 75 pounds and gained back that plus 20. And the second time I lost 100 pounds over the course of 14 months doing everything the way you're supposed to. And I've gained back all but 25 of it. So that's right, this isn't my highest. Anyway, um, I know several people who've had bariatric surgery and been very successful. Of course, everybody knows someone who it didn't work for, or they gained all the weight back, or they had complications. And I will address all of those things in the future. I will say right now, though, that surgeries have come a long way in the past 30 years. Statistically, you're more likely to have a major injury or death from having your gallbladder removed than from having bariatric surgery. So I've done lots of research. I don't enter anything lightly. And my first step was looking at health insurance. And at the time... I had um, state health, and they only pay if you have comorbidities. And I am ridiculously healthy for someone who's so fat. So I don't need my knees replaced. They're not great, but they don't need to be replaced. And I don't have diabetes, so I don't have any of the things that they need to see. You know, my blood pressure is perfect. Let's keep it that way, uh, etc. So that wasn't an option. So I said, when I finally got a job that had health insurance, I would do it then. So I started a great new job, which I love, with great employers. And after three months, got my health insurance packet and discovered that bariatric surgery is specifically excluded. So I went to the local class for, with the surgeon here, a very reputable doctor, and asked, you know, what would it cost? for the surgery here, cash. And it was $32,000 for the specific surgery I want, which I don't happen to have laying around. Um, but my husband and I discussed this because he knows how important it, this is to me. Uh, we've had lots of conversations over the years about this topic. We said, you know, I'm, I'm investing in my MBA. Um, this is also potentially an investment in my career. Maybe not after people watch these videos later and see before. But. So we talked about that. And um, my brother suggested that I look into surgery in Mexico. And my first reaction was, no way. I'm not going to a human chop shop. But after the first reaction died down, then I decided I would investigate this. So I could say I could have, had investigated it and discovered, lo and behold, that this is a huge industry, that they actually know what they're doing, that people go from all over the world to Mexico to have bariatric surgery. And so then I started looking at the different companies, because it is a medical tourism company that coordinates everything, and looking at pricing, but also uh, credentialing, and everywhere I could look online, anywhere at... Uh, reviews to see what they offered. So I decided on Mexico Bariatric Center. It's in Tijuana. And I decided on the duodenal switch surgery, which I actually had already decided, but I had to make sure that not only did they do it, but they had a surgeon who'd done lots of them because that was important to me. And all told, it will be $8,630 for the surgery. That includes everything from picking us up from the San Diego airport, driving us over the border, night at the hotel, all the pre-op stuff, three nights at a hotel after the surgery. You know, obviously surgery is included in the surgery cost. Um, and I said three nights in the hospital, yes. My husband in the hotel during that time because he needs to rest and then a night for both of us at the hotel and then driving us back to the airport. So $8,630 all told for the surgery. 
Additional costs are airfare for the two of us. Obviously, I need to have a companion with me for this, and that is my sweet husband. Uh, also, expenses, airfare, passports. I've been to Canada, which is really weird, I have to say, for a military brat. I've never been outside the country except Canada, and the last time I traveled to Canada, your Washington State driver's license was good enough. So we have to get passports, and that is not as cheap as you might think. Actually, if you live in Washington and had to get an upgraded license, you know this. It ain't cheap, but it is what it is, right? But the other big cost is replacement of my income. Um, I will not be able to work for three weeks. I don't have sick leave through my job. They're very, they're wonderful about taking time off. There's just not a uh, provision for sick leave. And I don't qualify for paid time off until next April. So I have to replace that income. So a reasonable question, question I would be asking if I were you, is doesn't your husband work? And can't you just get a second job? Again, reasonable questions. My husband is disabled. He receives disability. He's unable to work. And so that fixed income while helpful is not a lot and it's the amount that it is. Um, I work full time and go to school full time. I'm getting my MBA so that doesn't leave room for another job. I do sell Avon on the side but I haven't had a lot of time to work on that. I'm doing everything I can at the moment to pump that up to help offset these costs but it's still a bigger cost than I can do on my own. And that is the money and that path part.